This is Macro Analytics, delivering frank conversations on global macroeconomics and market analysis outside the mainstream, featuring discussions and debates between Gordon T. Long, publisher and editor of GordonTLong.com and his guests. The content of this discussion is strictly the opinion of the participants. It is in no way a solicitation for business, nor is it to be considered investment advice of any sort. Always consult a registered investment advisor before making any investment decision. These discussions are extremely hard-hitting and terribly frank, and parental discretion is advised. Now, on to the show. Good morning. I'm Gord Long with GordonTLong.com. I have Ms. Shedlock of Sitka Pacific Capital and the Global Economic Analysis Blogspot.com joining us this morning from Chicago. Welcome back, Ms. Hey, Gordon. Uh, pleasure to be back on. Lots, lots, lots of news uh, going on here. Stock market collapse, Europe's blowing up, uh, terrorist raids everywhere, oil hit below 30. Where do we want to start with this thing? Mish, let's talk about the degree of global slowdown that we're seeing. Like it's nothing short of startling. And two of the articles that you had out actually showing there were no ships at sea. Well, that was the claim, but it was wildly exaggerated. The The claim was that there was no shipping in the North Atlantic. Well, actually, there was. However, shipping rates are down. Rail traffic is down. You know, so I, I, what I said in my blog is, this is really bad. There's no need to exaggerate just how bad. So uh, 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 shipping is down. Manufacturing's beaten up. My God, import-export prices came out today. I don't know if you saw those. Uh, uh, month over month. Um, Export prices fell 1.2%. Import prices fell 1.1%. Maybe I have those numbers backwards. Either way, it was it was pretty horrific. And of course, the export prices, you know, that's what's uh, of, of most concern here to the U.S. And uh, they plunged over twice of what economists expected. And every month, year a year over year. For an entire year, we've seen negative prices both month over month and year over year in both imports and export prices. Quite amazing. We've, we've not seen depths of contractions like this any time other than when the U.S. has been in recession. And in fact, the only time we've seen them as bad as this is during the uh, uh, financial crisis 2008-2009. Mitch, the economic numbers just seem to get worse and worse. And, you know, all our work says that we think we're in a recession right now. But what's your outlook? Do you, do you see a recession in 2016 in the U.S.? I think we might be in one now. Uh, my prediction in, the begin in January of 2015 was that Canada would go into recession, or Canada was in recession. Uh, and right before that, I said they would. And I said the U.S. would follow in 2015. I had a lot of people emailing me saying, well, Mish, looks like you got this one wrong. And I'm sitting there thinking, mm, well, did I get it wrong? I don't know. They, the GDP is revised, 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 and back revised. We won't know whether we're in recession now for months at least. Uh, the, the, we, had, we had GDP revisions just come out last month going all the way back. To 2005 because of an error in the way the BEA was calculating construction. That's pretty amazing. Error went all the way back to 2005. I actually called up the BEA a couple days ago and I asked them, well, when are we going to see how much this revised these back GDP reports? And the answer was I think it was, I don't remember the precise date, I'm going to say July 26th or July 29th of 2016. So uh, here we are, they, they announced these revisions are coming, they don't tell us how much, by how much, uh, uh, and they didn't even say when, although you can find it on their site or call them up as I did. Now, what's interesting about that is actually GDP is going to rise in 2014 as a result of this, but... Uh, uh, GDP in 2015, this is going to add to the slowness. I did a back of the hand calculation. I might be wildly off, Gordon, but I think it's going to take about a percentage point or so off of GDP for 2015 
and we're already flirting around 2% here for the year. It's going to be 1%, and the Fed's going to hike into that, and they're insisting they're going to get four more hikes in. They even came out today and said that. Somehow that news ignited the stock market, and I'm sitting back here saying, really? <laughs> really? Nish, what about internationally or globally? Do you see a recession in 2016? Oh, absolutely. The way global recessions defined is a little bit different. Uh, uh, so, so purportedly, anything under 2% global growth, because you average everything, you know, supposedly more stuff is growing than, than, than shrinking. And so they say anything under 2% is a global recession. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you there, Mish. Uh, it used to be 3%, and they just recently revised it down that 2% was the threshold um, as we got. <laughs> well, you got to keep ratcheting these numbers down to, to, to meet the following numbers as they come along. The, the, uh, so anyway, that's what they've done, and uh, uh, I suspect we're actually in one already once again, and the main reason is I, I believe China's growth is half or less of what they purport this th thing to be. So they're saying six. Is it really three? Is it one? Uh, I don't know. Nobody believes China's numbers, and I certainly don't either. I just I don't believe any of these numbers. So, But China's particularly bad. Mrs. you certainly recall 2008. Uh, the crisis pre-warning was when the interbank lending went right through the roof, and I noticed on Monday in Hong Kong, 13 and three quarter percent overnight lending in the banks. That sounds like a crisis to me. Well, what it is, is China was trying to drive out wan speculators, and that's one of the ways they did it. And uh, uh, everyone, remember a few years back, everyone thought China was going to take over the world, just as everyone thought Japan was going to take over the world in the 90s. Now everyone thought, you know, that, that, that China was going to take over. Uh, uh, the world, all this hot money boards straight into China and the B line, and now uh, uh, that hot money is coming out. We're seeing it in capital flight, not just to the hedge funds that, that that foolishly poured money in there, expecting the wand to rise. Now they're betting a, that, that the wand's actually going to fall. Uh, it's pretty peculiar uh, uh, this chain of events here. But th there's there's certainly capital flight in China. Uh, 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 there's a belief in China that the yuan is overvalued, and uh, China stuck it to the uh, currency speculators last week. And as a result, or consequence, or maybe because the rates went as high as they did, th th that uh, uh, overnight lending. You know, in those Hong Kong dollars or, or won spiked as a result of China's efforts to stop this speculation. You know, uh, of course, all they got to do, you, you want to stop speculation, just, you know, float the wand and let it get where it wants to go. Now, the weird thing about that is, is, you know, the U.S. seems to think that the wand would rise. Everyone else seems to think it would sink, which has been my position actually for a number of years, and we're actually seeing the market play out that way. But all of this GDP growth, you know, they, Zero Hedge had, had an interesting post on, on, on his site the last couple of days showing, you know, entire buildings just being blown up. They're, they're not ever been used. Brand new buildings, never been used, blown up. And we've got vacant malls. What are we going to do with those? So, so the weird thing is, presumably, presumably, we added a GDP when we built those things. It took government spending to knock them down, and so and presumably that government spending added to GDP again. You know, does this really add up? I don't think so. So uh, uh, we we've overreported Chinese GDP. We never took into uh, consideration all the pollution costs, the pollution cleanup costs. But when they go clean it up, you know, they'll add that back into GDP again. Literally double counting all kinds of stuff in China. And and the numbers don't make any sense, even if it weren't for that, if you ask me. Mish, switching gears a little, uh, this week, President Obama delivered his last State of the Union address. I know you've written a number of articles uh, on it. Uh, 
Is, in fact, the State of the Union strong, as he says? Uh, well, obviously it's not, but it depends on how you want to measure it. The weird thing I thought about the speech is you could have removed a couple of, uh, of, of key phrases. Uh, at, at one point, Obama said something about... Uh, the U.S. military being strong. Weirdly, you know, I, actually the Republic, Republicans, I didn't see the Speaker of the House rise once. I missed the very beginning of it, so so perhaps he did. There's like no applause from from Republicans on anything he said, even things that they, that, that, that they would otherwise agree with. But the weird thing I thought about the speech is, is, is you take out some, some stuff about global warming nonsense and, and uh, uh, overspending on the military and he, uh, a Republican president could have delivered that same speech with ease, and the Republicans would have all stood up and cheered, and the and the Democrats would have sat there and looked stone faced like that, which is how uh, uh, the the speaker looked for the entire. I mean, no emotion. I mean, he just literally sat there like that the entire time. Uh, the and then the Republican response to that was completely feeble. The dragon, this uh, uh, what was it, senator uh, uh, who gave gives a speech that was really one hundred percent start to finish anti-Trump. Uh, they it's very 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 peculiar here. Uh, uh, you know, they they could have attacked Obama on a number of things. They 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 didn't, and uh, but Obama bragged about the things that he got right. And he bragged about some things that just happened that certainly weren't, you know, he can't take credit for, like the falling participation rate and the unemployment rate dropping because of people retiring and, and all the part-time effects, uh, jobs because of Obamacare. You know, nonetheless, okay, he bragged about unemployment rate falling. Of course, if we, if we measured this thing accurately, it would be close to 10% or something. I don't know. I'd, it, it depends on what you want to call it and how you want to measure it. But literally, I believe it's a joke here. But uh, the, the, he did two things. I mentioned one of them in my blog. I, I think the, the, the treaty or agreement with Iran was... Uh, not only one of the best things that he's done, but one of the best things in the last eight years, as a matter of fact, that anyone has done. Uh, uh, I think sitting down and talking with Iran is a good thing. He also uh, opened up relations or is attempting to open up relations with Cuba. I think that's a fantastic idea as well. In general, I believe in trade, not wars, and this is the way you do it. And uh, but, uh, you know, he got he got no credit for that. I'm not even sure he got credit for that from the Democrats. In fact, I'm pretty sure he didn't. There's a lot of Democrat and Republican concerns over the single best thing he did. I guess that's the way it has to be, right? Since the Paris attacks, terrorist activity just seems to keep going on, accelerating. We see it this week in, or last week in Turkey, this week in Indonesia, Jakarta. Uh, we're seeing uh, immigration issues in the refugee problem in Germany, Sweden, causing uh, serious issues. Comments? Oh, I, my, I got, well, Merkel has blown this. German Chancellor Angela Merkel has blown this every step of the way from her open arms policy back in when was that September October and the initial thing is it, you know uh, uh, people cheered for about a week they were actually applauding these migrants as, as they got off the trains and I said give this about a week and I was exactly right it took one week and people started saying well you know what maybe this isn't such a great idea and then as more and more and more came in, which is what happens when you give away free benefits, free services, free money, free health care, uh, shelter, everything, you know, you're, there's an unlimited demand for free services. And so these people started pouring in f from everywhere. And, uh, you know, then we had the attacks in Paris. Uh, we had attacks in Cologne, Germany, over New Year's that they tried to cover up. We had attacks yesterday in, in Indonesia, the capital of Indonesia, and uh, we had attacks, terrorist attacks um, in Turkey. 
And Turkey came out and said, we still have an open door policy. And Merkel has essentially said the same thing. I was looking for the exact quote before we came on, but just a couple of weeks ago, she said, "You know, no, you know, we're gonna we're gonna do more. We're gonna send them back, but but we really can't change your open door policy." She didn't say it exactly like that, but that was the exact intent of 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 what she said, with, without trying to hide it, actually. And uh, we had an interesting reaction today. I sent you right before we came on. I, I thought it was one of the the, the, the best things any I've seen a, a politician do in terms of taking matters into into their own hands. But a, a a German politician from some small city got so fed up with the refugee crisis, he warned uh, uh, Merkel in advance. And, and he said, you, you know, uh, you know, here's the quota that Germany said it would take. This is my fair share for my city. If I get any more than this, I'm going to ship them to you. And my God, uh, uh, we actually had a politician do exactly what he claimed. He loaded uh, uh, 31 refugees, bust them seven hours, and dumped them at, at, at uh, uh, Angela Merkel's office door. Can you imagine someone trying to do that with Obama? They'd have been arrested on the spot. You know, probably accused of being a terrorist themselves. So uh, uh, anyway, a, a German politician did that. He did what he said he would do. He explained why in advance. Actually went ahead and did it. That, that's a rare combination of, of having a policy made sense, explained in advance, and actually done by a politician in such a short order. Uh, I, it, it could be the, the idea of the year for 2016. Uh, 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 what if the mayor of every city in Germany you know, uh, uh, took up their excess refugees and dumped them on Merkel's doorstep. You know, you know, maybe I had to dump them on her on her home doorstep. Maybe that maybe that would maybe maybe that would carry a, a bigger message. But she's really done herself in here, Gordon. I don't think she's got to win. Uh, uh, she's only got losing options here now. She's either going to have to cave in and backtrack off of what she's done. She can't possibly do that fast enough. And, and even if she d did, and let's say she uh, uh, took the uh, Trump approach and just deported them all, there are going to be a, a lot of angry people here that are going to want to strike back at Germany. So it's heads she loses, tails she loses, and it all started with an inept political decision to welcome these people with open arms. It was absolutely crazy. Mish, this is obviously a EU-wide problem. Is there a solution that you see? Well, the solution I, I thought was 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 pretty easy a long, long time ago. You need to stop them from coming in, and you know, you, and and the entry point is actually Greece. Uh, uh, so you build a fence along that whole Greece border, and you enforce it. Period. And you know, you take the approach that Australia did. Any people coming by boat into Italy, well, into Australia, uh, the, the, they gathered them up and boated them back. And uh, guess what? Some people died, you know, trying to get over by boat. But the dying stopped as soon as Australia went to a no-boat refugee policy. Italy should do the same thing boat them back, send them back, a border on uh, uh, a fence, uh, also need to do something uh, about the magnet. Got this Merkel magnet, zzz, att attracting people in. Well, when you offer free benefits, and Germany and Sweden offered more benefits than the rest of the Eurozone countries, so, so uh, 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 the, these people had no desire to go to Greece. There are no <laughs> jobs in Greece. Greece has unemployment rate 20%, youth unemployment like 50%. People don't want to go there. They want to go to Germany because of the free handouts. Now, you know, maybe Germany needs to rethink its handout policy. You know, and, and look at the education level of these people going in. They're not going to get jobs. Most of them can't speak German. The, the, the uh, uh, even those with a solid education and and uh, uh, don't have the skills needed for the German industry to take them on. 
this is a huge, huge loss. Yeah, we hear all these Keynesians come out and say, oh, this is going to be a big boost. This is going to boost GDP. And boost GDP how? You know, the magic of GDP, you know, government spending adds to GDP. But uh, uh, there's this little thing out there that, that, that limits uh, 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 deficit spending to 3%. So you got to take, you know, to feed all these people, to give them free housing, to give them free food, to give them free sh shelter, to give them, you know, free medical expenses. You know, that money has to come from somewhere. And, you know, and if they print it, it's money that can't go for genuine growth, genuine projects, things that are needed. So, uh, you know, the, this Keynesian idea that you can spend yourself to nirvana really needs to die a sudden death. But it just goes on and on and on and on and on. Amazing. Mish, a lot of bad news here. Um, are we looking at a crisis this year, 2016, like we saw in 2007, 2008? I don't know. And no one knows that. There's a lot of people out there telling me they know. And I blasted a couple of them in my blog. And one of them got back to me the other day and said, Mish, see, I was right. When were you going to admit I was right? Now, this person told me he knew that it was going to start within weeks. Uh, this is not knowable. You know, people have been predicting this, f f you know, for years, actually. Certainly the stock market's been overvalued for years, but it doesn't have to play out this way. I had a big rally today. Bullard came out and said, you know, you know, some nonsense. The Fed's going to get more four more hikes in and, and that oil is going to bottom eventually or, you know, some such nonsense like that, you know, set off a, 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 a yet another rally in the market. You know, could it have legs? I don't know. I would incline to think not. But, you know, what if instead of this massive collapse that we saw in in, in in, in, in 2008, early in Mar through March of 2009, what if that collapse is just 10 or 15 percent a year for the next three years? We get the same place, don't we? But without all of the panic, you know, 15 percent a year is going to look bad, it's going to feel bad, it's going to smell bad, and it's going to be bad. Certainly, the pension plan plans they're expecting. Uh, uh, eight percent a year, you know, expecting let's say you know a positive thirty percent over the next three years, compounded or whatever that would be, and instead they're getting you know thirty percent declines. Well, that's going to hit some pension plans pretty hard. Might even bankrupt the state of Illinois pension plan. The state of Illinois pension plans are bankrupt right now. It's just a matter of uh, of of when we get get to the point of recognition. I mean, they're 41% funded after this massive rally that we've had in the stock market since, since uh, uh, March of 2009. So, you know, it, it, it's craziness. So there doesn't have to be this collapse. We can just do a slow boat to hell over, over the next three, four, five, seven years. Why not? Why, why can't we just decline 5 or 10% for four years and then just go sideways? For another four, so uh, uh, I'm not predicting a collapse, although it wouldn't surprise me at all if we see one. Uh, I, I think the real painful response would be this this slow sinking collapse, where the Fed, you know, is able to hang on and avoid doing another, you know, QE, igniting the markets higher. And we just do this painful drift down, you know, flirting with, you know, a zero percent growth for the next three years. That would be probably the worst for the markets. Mish, any uh, closing comments here um, before we break? Uh, well, uh, did, did we get a chance to uh, uh, look at Target 2? The, the, let's briefly talk about Target 2. Uh, the... Banks in Europe are essentially insolvent, and, and I think we're at the beginning of the recognition phase of that. New rules went in this last month uh, 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 where there were, there were bail-ins in, in Portugal, bail-ins in Italy, and I think maybe last year bail-in in an Austrian bank, uh, uh, if, if, if I'm recalling correctly, and people are afraid. You know, uh, uh, just as we saw with Greece, 
people are, are, are pulling their money out uh, uh, of Italian banks and depositing them, say, in German banks. This causes a balance. The ECB is guaranteed, you know, that balance. And Italy is it's at its worst ever. Spain is at, you know, one of its worst points ever, not the worst. Money is fleeing these peripheral countries, all going to Germany as if Germany is safe. Well, if any of these countries leave the Eurozone, and I still think it's likely that someone's going to have to cover uh, uh, um, these imbalances, these defaults. And who is it going to be? It's going to be the German people, the German taxpayers, the German banks. So uh, the idea that Germany is some sort of safe haven, that's misguided. I'll leave you with the message. I don't think there's any place safe in Europe right now. It's my message for 2016. Mish, could you tell our listeners how they could follow your work and your writings? Uh, you can do a Google search for Mish. Right now my blog is globaleconomicanalysis.blogspot.com. Uh, but just do, go, do a Google search for Mish instead. it will take you straight there. I've actually got a blog, uh, a new blog uh, uh, in the works here. I'm going to move off of Blogger onto WordPress. Hopefully uh, after I do that, and it should be coming up soon, that same uh, search for Mesh will take you to my new blog rather than the old one. Mesh, thanks for your time, and let's hope that 2016 actually turns out to be a good year for everyone. <laughs> uh, let's hope so. It's sure not shaping up that way here. This has been Gordon T. Long, editor and publisher of GordonTLong.com. New recordings are posted regularly and can be found at GordonTLong.com. New show notifications are available through RSS feed, iTunes, and other social networking venues at GordonTLong.com.